our first question. It's, mm -hmm. can you just explain to us briefly about how you got involved in this field and why you're passionate about nuclear affairs? I grew up um, in a family in the United States uh, where my father was an uh, officer uh, on nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines during the Cold War. And so when I was in college, I wound up taking an international relations class as an elective, uh, and the issue about nuclear weapons came up, and all of a sudden things started to click from my childhood and the coffee table books that, that have, have been there. Uh, and I really got involved and my professor told me as an undergrad, you know, this is something that you could do uh, professionally. And, you know, the more I started to read, I became very passionate about arms control and nonproliferation. And I left college and did a master's degree. And while I was doing uh, a master's degree, I started working at a think tank, the Federation of American Scientists in Washington, D.C. And I really got involved there at the intersection of science and, and technology and international security. Next, we'd like to move on more to the questions about your advice to young people. What are some examples of effective measures you have seen young people carry out to really influence pub public opinion on being more against nuclear weapons or testing? The first way to start is not to think about public opinion. It's public opinion comes later. It's to actually start with talking to your parents, your friends, and parents. That may seem simple, but we have a legacy today of nearly 15,000 nuclear weapons and more than 2,000 nuclear weapons tests that have been carried out. We don't get to opt out of nuclear politics. Whether you are currently in a city, which maybe you aren't thinking about it, is being targeted with nuclear weapons, whether someone who is the same age as you in another city of the world is being targeted with nuclear weapons in your name, or whether a nuclear war or a nuclear test would environmentally affect you, we're all affected by nuclear politics. So it's up to us to change the minds of people around you and to reach out to politicians. And that's one of the other things, of course, too, besides the traditional writing of letters to politicians uh, that has gone on over the course of the years, it's, it's social media. It's being able to uh, have things and retweet them and images and go viral. And the images of our polling data, for example, and it made its way into the hands of politicians. And I think that that's really important as well. Mm -hmm. I think members use your data and conclusions specifically to better engage with policymakers. And what are the next steps for youth activism you would recommend? Public opinion is not a sufficient condition for social change related to nuclear testing, but it's a necessary condition. And that is when you are thinking about writing article, blogging, contacting, whether it's on social media or traditional media politicians, it might be useful to look at public opinion polls such as our own, and I've provided links to that, and we've provided you know, really easy to read histograms that work well for politicians. And you can also take data and you can make your own graphic. It's important maybe to even think about asking your own survey questions and trying to gauge what are the knowledge levels. Again, do people think that the CTBT is already entered into force? Do publics understand the consequences of nuclear test explosions? And how can education be improved as a result? How can awareness be improved as a result? And again, I think there are many great steps for youth activism on these issues. And as I mentioned, I am super, super encouraged by the, the CYG and keep fighting the good fight.